In this lesson, we'll explore the concept of the conditional density for one random variable conditional on the observation of another, and we'll show how to use that density to evaluate conditional expectations. Well, the conditional density for a random variable, say x, conditional on the observation of another random variable, say y, is defined as the ratio of the joint density for the two random variables to the marginal density for the conditioning random variable. Therefore, we can write the joint density as the product of the conditional density and the marginal density for the conditioning variable, which is true regardless of which variable we condition on. Now, as we've done here, rather than use the explicit notation that we are conditioning on the event, that the conditioning random variable, say y, takes the value lowercase y, we'll use an implicit notation by only writing the value that the variable takes, which we've also done when we condition on the random variable x. Well, as an example, let's look at the density we studied in a previous lesson, which had a range for both variables over the non-negative real numbers. The density looked like this when we show it on a false color, two-dimensional false color image. And now let's take a look at some conditional densities for the variable x when we condition on the value that y takes. Here, for example, is what the shape of the density would look like when y takes the value 1 half. Recall now that this is a slice through the joint density when y is equal to 1 half, but then normalized by dividing by the conditional, the marginal density for y, and that makes this conditional density integrate to 1. Here's what the conditional density looks like when y is equal to 1, and as a reference, I've left the conditional density for y equal to 1 half on the plot. Here's what it looks like when y equals 1.5, and when y is equal to 2, and when y is equal to 2.5. Now for each of these joint densities, we can multiply by x and integrate to evaluate a conditional expectation, which for each value of y would look like this. As an example, if y is equal to 1.5, then the conditional expectation for x would be approximately 0.65. Now going through a similar analysis, that is evaluating the conditional density for y, conditional on x, we could find the conditional expectation for y as a function of the values that x takes. And that would look something like this. Well, once we become familiar with the concept of conditional expectations, we can use a powerful method for evaluating unconditional expectations. To do this, we begin by evaluating the conditional expectation for one random variable condition on another. And because this expectation might take a different value for each value, in this case, that x takes, we can think of this as a function of the conditioning variable x. And because this variable is random, we could evaluate its expected value. Now, it's a simple exercise to show that this iterated expectation will result in the unconditional expectation for the random variable y. And for many applications, this is a useful way to evaluate expectations. As an example, let's suppose that x is a zero mean Gaussian random variable with a standard deviation equal to sigma. And then conditional on x, y is an exponential random variable with a mean equal to x squared. Now using the exponential density for the conditional density for y given x and the Gaussian density, for x, we could ev evaluate the marginal or the unconditional density for y, which would evaluate to 1 over the square root of 2 times y times sigma times e to the negative square root of 2 times y divided by sigma. And the range would be non-negative real numbers. Now using this density, we could multiply it by y and integrate over the range from 0 to infinity and evaluate the expected value for y. Now let's approach this in a different way using iterated expectations. Using iterated expectations, we could see that when we condition on x, the expected value for y is by definition x squared. Then we could take the expected value 
of this, which is a random function of x, which would result in the expected value of x squared. And since x is a zero mean Gaussian random variable with a standard deviation of sigma, the expected value for x squared, by definition, would be sigma squared. Then by iterated expectations, this is the expected value for y. Now this approach would work for finding the second moment for y or for any other function of y. And as I stated earlier, it's a valuable and powerful method for finding expected values in models that involve more than one random variable.